After the successful launch last September of Connect VHTS satellite dedicated to bridging the digital divide in Europe, UTELSAT 10B is another promising program. We are extremely proud to provide our long-standing partner UTELSAT with this Spacebus Neo satellite, which reflects our ability to develop new digital telecommunications solutions. It is the fruit of a great teamwork with UTELSAT, CNES, and ESA, whose support has been crucial as we strive to meet current and emerging market needs. UTELSAT 10B has greater capacity than its predecessor UTELSAT 10A, also manufactured by Thalesania Space and launched in 2009. The HTS missions of this new generation satellite will enable UTELSAT to meet the growing demand for anywhere, anytime connectivity on land, at sea, and in the air. From its 10 degree east position, UTELSAT 10B satellite will not only guarantee the continuity of services, including video broadcasting, but more importantly, boost connectivity on the growing mobility markets. This launch illustrates the strong and trusted relationship with UTELSAT. It is the 26 satellites we manufactured and the second HTS satellite we launched this year for UTELSAT. Go for launch. Awesome news, all systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 carrying the UTELSAT 10B payload. T minus 30 seconds. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station carrying the UTELSAT 10B satellite. Power and telemetry. Now, during ascent, the M1D engines will actually swivel and help steer Falcon 9. This is known as gimbal. The rocket autonomously tilts the engines just a few degrees, and this gimballing allows the vehicle to Falcon perform. Supersonic allows the vehicle to perform a gravity turn, which is when we go vertical as well as horizontal. Now we're still going up, but we are also heading horizontally Max away Q. from the launch pad. And we have just heard that we've passed through Max Q. That is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees on ascent. Now we will throttle those M1D engines back up on the first stage. This is a really cool tracking view of our Falcon 9 vehicle. Coming up next, in about a minute, we will have a few events happening back to back. That will be Miko stage. Back engine chill has started. Miko stage separation and SCS1. We just heard that call out that the MVAC engine is chilling. Now, Miko is main engine cutoff. That is where all nine of the M1D engines shut down on the first stage. That's what you're seeing lit up on your screen there. They will shut down in preparation for stage separation. That's where the first and second stages will separate. Stage one will um, not be landing on today's mission. And stage two will continue on its journey to take the UTELSAT 10B satellite to its targeted drop off orbit. Now, those events are coming up here in about 20 seconds. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. 
stage one, FTS is safe. Back. Great news, we did have Miko stage separation, and there you can see on your screen that MVAC engine has ignited. Now, as a reminder, we are not attempting to land our first stage today as our mission requires more performance, so it will use up the fuel typically used for landing. Now, coming up next will be fairing separation in a few seconds here. Great live view there of the fairing halves separating from the stage fairing two separation. vehicle. Oh, Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. And there we heard the confirmation call out. We will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again today once they fall back down to Earth using our recovery ship, Doug. Second stage is currently in the middle of its first burn and our next milestone coming up is second engine cutoff one or SECA one and that's scheduled to happen in about four minutes from now. Halo deploy confirmed. An incredible view. You are watching the UTELSAT 10B satellite drifting away from Falcon 9's second stage.